Welcome back to my show. I'm the Beard Venturer. And I'm Llama. And we're in the Llama Lair today. <laughs> uh, we're right outside of Boise, Idaho, because we could. Well, yep, why yeah. not? So today's beer, we've got one from Fremont. This is the 12th anniversary with cherry. Um, yeah, so we got a stout 2021. What'd you say the, uh, the ABV was? Uh, this one's on the lower side of their barrel aged stuff. It's only eleven percent, so yeah, only nothing, nothing too crazy. Only eleven. All right. Good warm up starter beer. So Fremont's from Seattle, Earth. Oh, that smells good. Yep, should have a pretty good, uh, pretty strong and motor oil, cherry nose. Yeah, that's what I like in my big stouts. Okay. For stout, it is pretty carbonated. That's what I was gonna do, kind of hard pour a little bit, see what I got. Oh man, I hope that comes through on the camera. Watching <laughs> that build and cascade down. Um, yeah, that's that's really nice. Okay. Of course, there is a little more in there, but let's. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh man first yep. off you do smell dark cherry yep dark cherry and just toasted 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 be interested to see if there's a chocolate note on this one mm-hmm subtle chocolate the malt backbone is uh, nothing short of fantastic that's kind of scary See, only 11%. Only 11, and it doesn't <laughs> taste like... Uh, yeah, no, very very smooth. Um, for being a barrel-aged, a blend of barrel-aged beers, um, it's not very boozy. Dude, that drinks like a six. Um, very mellow, very smooth, well-blended. see if there's uh, anything on here. Uh, barrel-aged Imperial Stouts. Aged in eight to 10-year-old Heaven Hills Bourbon Barrels. Wow. Yeah, dark tart cherries. Mm hmm Royal Ridge Fruits. Bourbon vanilla. Yeah. Bourbon vanilla extract barrels. Um, okay. So, the first problem with this beer, that's glaringly obvious. Uh, this is a limited release and won't be available every day. Because... Um, yeah, so actually, this is it. Um, 2021 release, uh, Fremont. They do a lot of these limited releases, um, changes from year to year. Um, this one's 2021, so obviously the next one be 2022. It could be a completely different uh, stout. May not be brewed with cherries. Um, the 2020 wasn't with cherries. So uh, that's one thing Fremont does do. They, they like to change their beers up. Um, and if you haven't noticed by now, he's in the industry. So, uh, some of my co-hosts are just beer fans. Some of them are in the industry. Some of them are brewers, home brewers, and one or two of them are just people that thought it'd be fun to drink beer with me on camera. Uh, he's most of those. Um, yeah, two or three of those. Yeah. Um, beer fan. I've been in this industry, like you said, for quite a while now, almost two decades. Yeah. Um, but huge fan of beer, beer first, um, and huge fan of him. So oh, huge fan of you. Thank you. Cheers. Now, as I was in the retail side, he spent most of his time in the more wholesale side, you know. Yeah, distributors. I was a bartender, he sold the beer. Um, so he yes. said, hey, I've got some really good ones for us to do videos on, and this is flat gorgeous. Um, the second flaw that I have with this beer is I've got about 10 friends that will never, ever see anything like this where I live in Tennessee, and they're going to watch my video, and they're going to be like, <gasps> holy crap. Damn, this is really good. Uh, to be completely honest, I was a little nervous at first that with a bourbon barrel aged stout with cherries, I've had one of, actually I've only ever seen one other. And 
it said it was with cherries and you got no cherry flavor at all. But this one has cherry flavor and the bourbon. Yep, it's very complex for a stout. As Lunchbox will say, very crafty. <laughs> yeah, it is crafty, uh, but very complex. Uh, there's a lot of flavors, but one doesn't mask the other, which is what I really enjoy about this beer. Um, I am fortunate, uh, was, was fortunate to be able to get two of these. This is the second one. Um, I've been sitting on this one and um, hopefully we'll make some more videos and you'll get to see some of our, uh, some oh. of the older ones. I've got some that are Jeez. just over four years old, so be fun. Yeah. Make some more videos and uh, drink some more of these barrel aged um, goodness from Fremont. Well, I think we've got just about as much as we can really say about this beer. <laughs> so now it's time to go into my very distinct rating system. Which always first and foremost, the utmost most important thing, just most important, most important, did you dig it? Uh, fuck yeah. Uh, uh, yep. This is uh, absurd. It is up there. I'm super duper pleased. Would you have another, if at all possible? Uh, that's the problem with the limited release beers. It may not be possible. You know, you wind up, you get one you got, and then, then they're gone. Right. Um... This is a limited release bomber, so it's not going into the pick six thing. I always do, is it pick six worthy? Uh, but I would say if you're at some liquor store or beer store and you see this on the shelf, uh, yeah, grab it. It's definitely worth it. it it's most definitely worth it. Um, I've been trying to add in, like, is this, is this, would this one that would work better as just drinking it by itself or with food? And I honestly think it'd do fine either way. Obviously, just drinking it by itself, we're having a wonderful beer. But I mm -hmm. think it would pair well with some with some food. I'm not sure that I would say it needs to be a dessert beer. Uh, I think it would go well with some savory foods as um, well. Yeah, I think it could probably one of those rare that can go both ways. Um, something that's super rich because um, of the cherries and the, and the chocolate and the vanilla. Um, I think it'll help mellow the a super rich food, like a super rich like volcano cake or something yeah. super chocolatey. Um, but at the same time, you could probably have it with a really nice uh, steak, just because there is some sweetness to it. Um, I think it'll mellow that out too. So. Prime rib. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Nice prime rib. Either that or something spicy. I think it could cut down on something spicy a little bit. Like mm. it'll mellow you out on something a little Cajun you could, yeah. Uh, regardless, I think it'd just be good. <laughs> um, it was good. So I rank all the beers one pint to ten pints. One pint's the lowest, ten pints is the highest. Um, uh, you want me to go first? Yeah, I don't know your rating system all that well. Huh. I'd probably give this one probably a seven and a half, eight. Really? It's not my favorite stout that I've had. I've had some really good ones. Um, it's definitely not the worst uh, that I've had, um, but it's slightly above average. I mean, I, I would say five would be average and this is, mm -hmm. this is above average, um, but it is not lights out. Oh my God, this is not, I would, I would spend a hundred dollars to drink this yeah. again. Um, but definitely a seven and a half, eight, somewhere around in there. That's probably eight's where I'm at. I, uh, I'm very happy with this beer. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad I got the chance to drink it. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we started. Just remember, we started with the, the low alk one. Ooh. We started. So that means the, check start, for some other ones. We <laughs> started with the eleven, and hopefully you'll see some thirteens, fourteens. Ah, yeah. I think we've got about eight or nine more of these that we need to drink in the next couple of days. Okay. Some of these won't make it on film because we're just going to drink them. I can feel it. <laughs> I just know it. Just. Well, we've already had one. Yeah. But I did have two bottles of that. Yeah. So we do have a bottle so we can review that. One. Well, so. there you have it. Well, until your next beer adventure, cheers. Salute.